Lord, I thank you. It is a blessing, ain't it? Lord, I thank you. Well, it's word time. Amen. 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 It's time for word. Look, boy, you ready? You ready to eat? I'm going to ask those who can. Let's stand on our feet as we turn to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read. I'm going to start at verse uh, 35 of the B clause. That's what it says others were tortured. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 35b, for those who can, if you can't stand, don't, don't force yourself to do something that uh, you don't have, you can't do. But if you can, please do. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, we'll read 35 through 40. I'm continuing on in a sermon called The Testimony of the Faithful. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 35b reads, others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The sermon is going to be called again the testimony of the faithful. This is part two of, of this part two of the series. Can I do this real quick? I want to talk with y'all. I don't want to just preach. I want to talk. Y'all don't mind. Can I talk a little bit? For one, I'm not going to do a recap when my queen uploads the lesson and y'all can watch the lesson from the first one. I want, to, I want to talk to us about faith. I want to talk to us about faith, being faithful, and faithfulness. And how faith has gotten a bad rep how God's faith has gotten a bad rep because at times we think because we feel something that we have faith. And that's just simply not true. Faith is not indicative of a feeling. But faith is based on the truth of who God is. In most cases, you can feel good about something and it absolutely means nothing. You know, before I gave my life to Christ, I felt good about defending myself. I felt real good about fighting folks that, you know, did me wrong. I felt real good about getting uh, retali retaliated. I felt real good about it. I, <laughs> well, on, I felt so good about it that if you tried to tell me I was wrong, I would whoop you. That's a feeling, though. But that's not faith. Well, it's a, it's a faith in myself. It's a faith in my ability to do what I want. But it's not a genuine godly faith because it is not me surrendering to who God is. Most of the times, we consider how we feel to be the truth. But that's not true either. Because feelings are just letting you know where you are. Feelings are not indicative of the truth. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask y'all some questions. How many of y'all in here are saved? Show of hands. How many of y'all get mad? Does your anger negate your salvation? No. Just because you feel something does not mean that you are something. That, that was so good. The house should have been. Y'all that, that, that really should have been running around. But just because you feel something does not mean that you are something. You can feel one way, but it's not indicative of the truth. I'm a man. Regardless of how sometimes I may feel like, man, I'm weak. I'm a man. God made me a man. No feeling can change the truth that I am a man. For ladies, you are women. No feeling can change the truth that you are a man. See, when you are saved, when you are a Christian, you are a saint. And no feeling can change the truth that you are a man. So what we have is a big misunderstanding of faith. And we have limited faith to be how we feel. Now, I'm, I, I want to be the first 
or one of the first few to let you know that your feelings should not run you. Your feelings should not run you. Actually, you run your feelings. The Apostle Paul told King Ruby, say, I think myself happy. I consider myself happy. He's bound, about to be imprisoned and killed. He's still preaching the gospel, and he's about to die for it. And they're like, man, you're in a rough spot. He's like, I think I consider myself happy. Notice what he did. His thoughts regulated his feelings. His faith told his feelings what to do. Why, why am I talking about this? Because we think that we are just supposed to go through this Christian walk in an easy way. And that's not true. You got to know it's echoing me. The Bible says, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now the last time God blessed me to preach, I talked to y'all about the testimony of prosperity. That was in Verses 30 through 35a. We talked about all the good things that a person can experience when they walk by faith and not by sight, when they keep their hand in the hand of God. Yeah. And you should experience a testimony of prosperity. But that's not the only testimony that you should experience. Yeah. So we, we get so focused on the prosperity that we forget about the problem that it takes to become prosperous. Yeah. And if you read this book called The Bible, you're going to see challenge, you're going to see conflict, you're going to see contentions, but then you're going to see victory right. when you're faithful. Right. So it's my responsibility today to talk to us from what the word of God says from a, from, a, from a principle of truth. How you feel don't matter. Right. Uh, y'all, just don't leave. I, I'm, I'm tell, brother Will, don't let nobody run. <laughs> How you feel don't matter. I didn't say that it, it, it was. I didn't say it wasn't real. I didn't say that it wasn't important. I didn't say that uh, it, it's lying to you. I'm saying how you feel about your faith doesn't matter because your faith is based on the object, who is Jesus. If you are a believer, we all depend on someone or something in certain portions of our lives. But the question is, why do we depend on it? Why do you depend on that which you go to when you have conflict, when you have trouble, when you have misunderstanding? Why? For some of us, it's a drug. Why do we go to that drug? For some of us, it's a, it's a, it's a pill. Why do we go to that pill? For some of us, it's a woman or a man. Why do we go to that woman or man? For some of us, it's, a, it's work. Why do we go to work? Because we believe that it's going to supply something for us that we need in that particular moment. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing that if it's a drug, if it's a pill, if it's a man, if it's a woman, if it's a work, if it's a money, it's going to fade. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. See, the, the good news about our God is that he's everlasting. Yeah. Always there. See, the reason why you have the power and the ability to endure and persevere is because you got a God who gives you the strength right. to do it. Right. So what I want to talk to you all about now is the testimony of perseverance. The testimony of perseverance. Now, when you see that in verses 35 through, 30, uh, 35 through 38, you'll see problems. Not just any problems, big problems. Like life on the line problems. I'm going to die problems or I might die problems. Not Facebook problems. Not problems that say, listen, I spoke to you, you didn't speak to me, we ain't friends no more, I ain't coming to church no more, God ain't real no more, problems. Not the type of uh, problems that, bills are problems, you know, you know. am I the only one with bills? Bills got, bills real, man, like life real records, and bills ain't number one artist. Bills are real, but, but bills really ain't the problem. Right. Hardships at the job, I mean, they're real, but those really that's really not the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. It's when you decide, I'm going to stand for my faith in Christ, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of us are being persecuted for something that we did. Mm -hmm. And it's our fault while we receive certain things that we experience. Yes, right. 
So the next time you wash your face and brush your teeth, blame yourself. Yes, sir. But these were being persecuted for their faith. Because they believed on God, they were tortured. So listen to this. Listen to this, y'all. This is, uh, y'all, can I sit down and talk with y'all for a minute? Listen to verse 35b. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still, others had trial of mockings and scourgings. Listen to that. Not only were they mocked, they were beat. And the chains of and imprisonments. They were bound in chains, literal chains, and taken to jail because they were they had the faith in God. Because they you're a Christian, and now because you're a Christian, you are an illegal person. So we're gonna beat you, talk about you in the process of beating you, lock you up, throw away the key, and hope, and you better pray that your God gets you out. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. Not for something that they did wrong, but for something that they did right. Their faith. Now, if you miss church because I got on your nerves, where's your faith? If you miss church because you got somebody at the church that's gossiping about you, where is your faith? If you abandon God because God didn't answer you when you wanted him to answer you, where is your faith? They were sawn in two, tempted, slain with the sword. They wandered about with sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Notice what the scripture says, of whom the world was not worthy. The world wasn't even worthy of the... the I'll talk about that in a second. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. What does it take to have this type of faith? That's the question. This is not a regular faith to the world, but it should be a regular faith to the body of Christ. Amen. He's talking about the Old Testament saints, the heroes of faith, so to speak. And they had a true and authentic understanding of who God was. That's what it takes to have this type of faith. Amen. This type of faith can only be developed, guess through what? Problems. This type of faith cannot be developed in Never Never Land. Right, right. This type of faith cannot be, cannot be developed on the side of the road. This type of faith cannot be developed because you woke up in the morning and said a quick five-minute prayer, if that. <laughs> this type of faith is developed through consistent pursuing of God in the midst of life's problems. See, when we say true and authentic, I'm talking about that which only God can confirm. And God doesn't confirm it with an amen. He confirms with fire. God tests your life. He tests your faith through fire. So we want to have a testimony of prosperity without having a testimony of perseverance. And God wants us to persevere by faith. In other words, this faith has to endure some disappointments. Anybody ever had a prayer not answered? And I mean, a prayer that you really wanted God to answer. Life on the line prayer. If he don't do it, it can't be done prayer. But he didn't do it. You don't kick your shoes off and say, I'm done with it. See, God is faithful even when we haven't been. No, God convicted me a few years ago. Years ago. Everybody say years ago. I talk about yesterday. I was telling God, I said, God, you said your word this, you know, John 15, 7. Your word abide in me and I abide in you. I will ask what I will and this shall be done for me. God, you said your word. God, you said your word. God, this is the confidence I have in you. If I ask anything according to your will, you hear me. And if I know that you hear me, the petition that I ask, I got it. 1 John 4, uh, 5, 15, 14, 15. I'm, I'm telling God everything he said. Matthew 18, 19, 20. You name it, I'm telling it. God ain't moved in a mighty way. <laughs> Seems like he moved in the opposite way. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's been faithful. He convicted me. He said, you seem to act like you've been faithful your whole life. You making it seem like me not answering your prayer makes me unfaithful. When you better check the annals of your life and recognize how unfaithful you were to me, B.C., before Christ. 
and AD after death. Because I died once I gave my life to Christ. Now my life is his. I hadn't always made a hundred little sense. There have been times when the Holy Spirit convicted me. Pray. No, all right. Study. Lord, I'm tired. Witness. Well, maybe they're going to say this. Since I've been saved. And then God don't answer my prayer. And here I am. Moping. But the scripture says, when we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Amen. Teaching us that God is able to endure your weakness for his glory. Yes. How come we cannot endure weakness for his? Right. So here's the thing. The testimony of perseverance means that perseverance is a cousin word of persecution. Mm. Or sister word, so to speak. Yeah. They're siblings. You cannot have one without the other. Right. So we want, we want the next portion I'm about to talk about, perfection. But you got to have persecution yeah. Yeah. and perseverance for God's perfection. Yeah. We want the politeness of God without understanding that God needs us to persevere for him. Right. So listen to what the text said, y'all. Others were tortured. Son and two. Can you imagine that? It's one thing to be stoned. It's another thing to be mocked and scourged. For my faith, I've been spit on for the sake of the gospel. I have. I've literally been spit on for having Bible study with, uh, with one of my consumers who was this big, who's a uh, IDD. And his brother called me to the room, hopped up, and spit on me because I was teaching his brother the word of God. I didn't wake up in the morning to think I was going to get spit on. So, needless to say, it almost got out of hand. But immediately, as I was wiping spit off because I was, I was in my feelings, and rightfully so, I was mad. And you, you would be too. Especially if you don't expect it. You know, I thought it was cool. But as I wiped off the spit, I remember the scripture that said that Jesus was also spit on. I remember the verses where Jesus says, if they've done it to me, they're going to do it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the scripture that Jesus says that you are, you, you are, it's considered worthy to suffer the same afflictions yeah. that Christ partook in. Right. Now, when that happened, I had to make a choice, y'all. Yeah. Either I had to rejoice that I was partakers of the same sufferings that Christ partook in, or I could go back to being who Jacob used to be. Right. Now, I didn't know that, what's today's date? July 18th? I didn't know that today I was going to be preaching this sermon. But if I would have not done what God said, I wouldn't have the testimony of perseverance. Right, right, right. I, you have to go through something for your faith. Not because you went to work and you made somebody mad. Right, right. But because you stand for the faith of Jesus Christ, that makes others mad. Yeah. Yeah. Christianity is not for the lighthearted, y'all. You realize how strong you have to be to be a Christian. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why we emphasize the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you can't walk this walk in your own power. You, God didn't create you with that. You know, when you read Genesis, we were created in paradise. That's problemless. God didn't create us to deal with problems. You think about that. The first time they had a problem, they made some insufficient Clothes. Right. They meant well. But you can't cover your body with no leaves. <laughs> leaves leave. Right. <laughs> and I stand up. God had to cover them with that which is sufficient. In other words, we have to depend on God in the midst of our problems. We don't abandon God in the midst of our problems. We pursue God in the midst of our problems. We don't forsake God in the midst of our problems. We go towards God in the midst of our problems. When you have persecution, God is saying, now I'm testing you to persevere for me. Yeah. It's bigger than you, though. Each one of these persons that we read about, they were doing it unto God, but others saw it. That's what brought about the testimony. Not only can I say it, you can say it. Not only you can you say it, I can say it that you did it. But we don't want to go through nothing. So our challenge today is grow up. 
Get over yourself. Get yourself off a pedestal that you don't belong on. The scripture says that God abandoned the throne for us. Now, I want you to know, when's, when was the last time that you decided you were going to take some dirt and give it a name? See, if we play in the dirt, it's grown folks at least. You know, they're going to ask us, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Hope they ain't bless them. Pray for them. You know, they're playing in the dirt. But God made us, molded us to his likeness and image, and then became just like we are. Endured worse than what we'll ever endure. And we can't be faithful to him. So remember, this is, this is a manifestation of your faith. This should be an outworking of your faith. This type of faith is a responsive faith. The reason why we are able to have this faith is because God gave it to us. So because God gave us his faith, we should be faithful in that faith. And as we continue to be faithful in that faith, we execute the faithfulness of God. So what we're showing is, God, you've been good to me. I'm going to be good unto you. God, you have blessed me. I'm going to be a blessing unto you. Persecution does not change the truth that you are who you are in Christ. Persecutions are supposed to be indicative that you are who you are in Christ. Does this make sense? Now here's I got here's how you can here's how you can turn the devil's weapon against you back on him. Because some of us going through some stuff that we caused in our own life. There's some debts that we brought on ourselves. There's some bondages we brought on ourselves. Dealing with some issues, not issues, some issues that we brought on ourselves. But here's how you turn that, that gun back on the devil. Yeah, God, I have some debts that I brought on myself. But from here on out, I'm going to do this. I'll pay my debts unto you. Yeah, I got some bondages I got myself in. From here on out, I'm going to live this life. And with this bondage that's, that, that's trying to keep me bound, I'm going to surrender it over to you. I got some issues that I brought upon my own life, some, some penalties that I'm dealing with. But from here on out, I'm going to praise you instead of complaining about it. And that's when you begin to turn the devils from here to here. That's the testimony of perseverance. Now, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm almost, almost. I ain't done, but I'm almost says that they wandered in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Could it be that God's trying to show the world that, 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 that you better than it? Could it be that God is trying to show the world that you are so much different, so unique, so much like him, that you are better than this world? No, I didn't say you're better than people. I said better than this world. It says of whom the world was not worthy. So let me, let me do it this way. Years ago, my son, we had a Bible study. My son said, I, I asked him, you throw air, you throw some dirt in the air. What happens to it? He said, it falls. I said, why? How old, how old was Rand at the time? When Rand said that, probably like six, seven. He said, because it don't belong there. You throw dirt in the air and it doesn't stay there because it don't belong there. Maybe God is allowing you to experience some persecution for your faith so you can show the world that I don't belong here. So you can show the world that we don't fit. So you can show the world that I'm better than the world. You're not better than people, but you are better than the world. If you notice God's judgment system in the beginning, he went from the weaker to the greater in authority. He, he first goes to Satan, tells Satan that you in trouble, this is going to happen to you. He goes to Eve, says you in trouble, this is going to happen to you. He goes to Adam, says you in trouble, this is going to happen to you. In other words, both of them were over Satan. But we keep coming down on Satan level and wonder why he's beating us up. <laughs> but I get it. I've been taught this way. It's all I know. I don't know no better. And when you don't know better, and when you don't know better, right side beating y'all. When you don't know better, thank you. Thank you. But we know better. We are not like those who are in the darkness, but those who are in the light. So when God blesses you to be in the light, you walk in the light. The scripture says that we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with God. Now, persecution is darkness. But 
don't become dark because you're getting experiencing some darkness. Don't you know that the power of light supersedes and transcends darkness? So what we do is we dim and we dim and we dim and we dim. dim. Now realize that the more we dim, the more the devil takes. The more he's able to take a residence and ownership. Because we don't want to be persecuted. And trust me, I know nobody wants to be persecuted. I got another testimony that God's but I've been shot at uh, uh held at gunpoint for the sake of the gospel. Teaching Bible studies in dope houses. Life's been threatened for the sake of the gospel. God told me, he said, Don't come back here again. I said, I'll be here next week. Amen. Six months later, he gave his life to the Lord. Amen. For the sake of the gospel. But I've been shot at, not for the sake of the gospel, because of me. Mm-hmm. I've robbed people. I've kicked people's door down. I've hurt people. I've shot people. I have the experience. That's why, that's why I love. That's why I love Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah! He's a healing God. He's a delivering God. But when you recognize how sinful you are, yeah. in comparison to how holy He is. What you go through for the sake of the gospel is worthy of it. And I want you to understand that he's worthy of persecution. Uh, He's worthy of persecution. So even if you don't experience the fullness of this, if you're being talked about because you're a Christian, he's worthy of that. If you're being overlooked because you're a Christian, he's worthy of that. If you've been undermined because you're a Christian, he's worthy of that. If you've been ostracized because you're a Christian, he's worthy of that. If you've been misunderstood because you're a Christian, he's worthy of that. If they don't put a heart on your post, that's okay. He's worthy of that. You think about how good God is. And how great he's been. How is he not worthy of our lives? But I can tell you what happens. We spend too much time in the mirror. On this gizmo. In the faces of other people. Doing stuff that ain't going to do nothing but nothing. But you know, the moment you wake up in the morning, God is already considered. He's already taking your day into the moment. Your day was already planned out for the Lord. See, sometimes my wife, I thank God for my queen who did an excellent job preaching the gospel this morning. Right. My queen, my queen, she sometimes she reminds me of the character of God. I got a little less than 10 minutes. Sometimes she reminds me of the character of God because sometimes I wake, the few times when I, I like just really sleep, like I mean like ugly sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like if, if I didn't go, you think he was dead sleep. <laughs> my queen will wake up and get my day started. I wake up to mm. breakfast. Mm. But she already done with the breakfast. Now she washing the dishes. I know it made me cry too. <laughs> <laughs> My phone has been on silent because she knew that I needed some sleep yeah. and I had a long day yeah. ahead of me. She put my phone on silent. Sometimes I be in my feelings, but you know, whatever. She trying to take care of a man. That's it, man. Come on, come on. The plate is already made for me. All I gotta do is just go get it. Mm, Everything is set up in the office for me. I'm good. All I gotta do is just go in there. Mm, that's good. She's already made preparations for me. And I'm just a man. Mm. Which means even what she did, she can do all. But not God. God has already taken your future into his plans. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all know Jeremiah 29. 11. Y'all know it. Yeah. Y'all know the thoughts he thinks towards you. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts of good, not of evil. That's right. To give you what? A hope in the future. You think, how is he not worthy of our faithfulness? So, in the midst of this plan to get to prosperity, or to perfection, so to speak, you got to go through some stuff. But God is trying to show the world this is my son, this is my daughter. The world is not worthy of you. I really hope y'all get this. The persecutions are designed to puppet the devil. 
to show the devil there's no weapon formed against them to prosper. Yeah. To show the devil that no matter what you do against them, they're going to re represent me. Yeah. So, faith is not just what you have. Faith is who you are. Right. Uh, pay attention. Y'all are not human doings. Right. You are human beings. Right. Faith is not what you have. Right. Faith is who you are. Yeah. And if you have faith in Christ, that makes you a Christian. You're a saint. That means that you are in Christ. Yeah. Therefore, you are able to endure the persecution that he's allowing you to experience. Yeah. Yeah. So quit running from it. Embrace it and endure it. Because that's where the glory is. Now, when, don't y'all judge me too bad. You know, I don't mind you judge. Don't judge me too bad. But when I was younger, I used to run from my whoopers. I did. My, my dad was the king of whoopers. And I was, I was, man, wherever I was, I was running. That's why, that's why I think I got so fast. I remember one time I ran like a whole day. You remember that, Willie? I ran a whole day. My dad felt so bad for me, just let me go to sleep. But when you run from it, you make it worse. When you run from that which God wants you to go through, you make it worse in your life. Because you're prolonging that which is supposed to perfect you. And you get weaker when you run. Okay. Yes, sir. Verse 39 says, And all these, having obtained a testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And this is what we all want to have. The testimony unto perfection. The testimony unto perfection. We want to have the testimony of prosperity. We want to have the testimony of perseverance. perseverance but ultimately, we want to have the testimony unto perfection. Now, when, we, when I talk about perfection, I'm not talking about as the world says it. Because when the world says perfection, the world talks about nothing wrong whatsoever. That's not what we're talking about. You are in, if you are in Christ, you are perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Job chapter 1. You are perfect in Christ. You're not flawless. You are not sinless. But you are perfect in Christ. But yeah, you still got issues. You still got problems. You still got some things you got to deal with. Sometimes you don't make a hundred. Sometimes you miss the mark. That doesn't negate that you're still perfect where you are in Christ. God wants us to grow. But the perfection that he's talking about is talking about the glorified perfection. Where you are flawless. Where you're no longer bound by sin. But that cannot come until you are in Christ. Amen. So listen to what he says. And all these having obtained a what, type, what type of testimony? Good testimony through faith. Through faith. Not with faith. Through faith. Going through faith. The problems that God allowed me to experience I'm going through is because of my faith. It's not because I brought this on myself faith. It's because I believe in Jesus faith. I'm representing Christ's faith. It's that going through faith. So if you drop the TH and through, what you stuck with? Rough. Yeah. And I'm not telling you to be excited about that. I'm telling you to man up. God's going to give you the grace to get through it. Because you want to have a good testimony. Or do you? Maybe you don't want to have a good testimony. I know we, now, we live in a day now, Jack. Well, I just want to get, I, I just want to go to heaven. That's it. I want to go to heaven, sister. I don't want to go. I don't want to bring nobody to Christ. I just want to go to heaven. I don't want to talk to nobody about Jesus. I just want to go to heaven. I don't want to go through no problems for the sake of my faith. I just want to go to heaven because of my faith. And Jesus is displeased with that. Because he never called us to be selfish in our salvation. He called us to bring others to him and to be disciples. So, and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, notice they did not receive the promise. There are certain promises on earth that you will never get. So let me be the first to pop the bubble. For those of you who believe that every promise that I, I, every promise that God has me, I'm going to get it. No, you're not. 
Not in this world. But what did he say previously? Of whom the world is not worthy. Y'all, 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 pay attention to this. The, the saint is, the world is not worthy of the Christian. But there are certain blessings that the Christian is not worthy of in this world. There are certain blessings that are not eligible for this world because this world ain't worthy of it. They're so precious that you can't get them in this world. You got to wait till you get the glory. You know that place where eyes haven't seen? Ears haven't heard? Neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love. He's talking about those types of blessings. Those types of promises. So you don't build your life based on the promises of God. You build your life based on who God is. Right. So let me press rewind, rewind real fast and take y'all back to verse 6. That without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a reward. So without this faith that he gives you, you can't please him. And if you can't please him, don't worry about having a testimony of prosperity. Don't worry about having a testimony of, of perseverance. Mm-hmm. You're never going to experience a prosim- uh, testimony of the perfection because you ain't pleasing God. No. But when you got faith in it, <laughs> your faith exhibits itself through the persecution. Yes. Your faith exhibits itself in how you live. Your faith is not what you do on Sunday. Right. Yeah. Coming to church late. Yeah. And talking about, I did that. <laughs> no Your faith is exhibited When folks get on that last nerve That you didn't know was there yeah. Your faith is exhibited And your faith is determined Your faith is demonstrated By how you reflect Christ in your life When it get hot <laughs> When people who used to be there Are no longer there <laughs> When you ain't got no money in your pocket And you can go back to the streets Yeah. That's when your faith is exhibited. Yes, See, we know who you are in the midst of your trials. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Not outside of them. Okay. Because you're happy. Right. And it's just like somebody when they, they fool. Everything's okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm okay. Everything's okay. Life is just good. But get hungry. Okay. You get hot fast. Yeah. Irritable. Yeah. You get snappy. Hands start hurting. That's when we know who you are. Now, when God does this for us, y'all, it's not that God don't know. God wants to show us what we are. So God is showing you, you really love me. You really trust me. You really got faith in me. Or you really don't. So, about to be done, this is it. God has provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. God has something better, but it's not eligible for this world. And that better is the perfection. The glorified body whereby we are able to experience Jesus Christ, the fullness of him, heaven, glory, forevermore. No more sickness, no more pain, no more disease, no more hurt, no more anguish, no more agony, no more sorrow, no more, no more, no more. We can't, we really can't even understand what, what, what I'm saying. Right. I just got through saying that and we really don't comprehend the fullness of that, bitch. Because right. right. we so enamored with you. Pain, suffering, anguish, etc. The byproducts of sin. We don't even, we don't get that there's going to come a point in life in glory that that stuff will be non-existent. Think, think about that. Think, think about how many problems you had just this morning to get here. How, how tough it was just to wake up. I ain't said, I didn't talk to you about somebody who got on your nerves. I'm just talking about in your bedroom. But that's going to come a point in time for those in Christ where well, there will never ever be this. That's perfection. God loves us so much. He say, oh, I'm going to make sure that they ain't perfect apart from you. I'm going to make sure that they get what they get, but you also get a chance to be partakers of it as well. This is why we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is why we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. And being that I'm there, if you have not given your life to Jesus, if 
Jesus is not your Lord, you are not saved. Jesus is not the Lord of your life, and he's not the Savior. If you have not surrendered, as my wife talked about earlier, if you have not entrusted your life to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, you are not saved. It's a nasty analogy, but I'm going to use it again. It's just like doing the number two in the bathroom, but you can't flush it. It just piles up and piles up and piles up. There's no forgiveness. There's no flushing. But for the believer, you do number two in the bathroom, you ask God to forgive you. He flushes it and brings up new water. Because you got a, you got a Lord. You got a system in place. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, now's the time. The last place you want to find out that you were wrong is hell. The eternal place of torment. And the same thing that uh, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them who love. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. The exact opposite is the case for those who hate. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has entered the heart of man, those who God has prepared for those who hate it. That's in hell. But he died on the cross of your sins, so you'll have to experience that. Is there one today who wants to give their life to Jesus? As both Lord and Savior. Can't play with this. 